Can you dehydrate butter or peanut butter or an avocado or olives or a really fatty cut of beef? Let's talk about that, shall we? Hi folks, it's Darcy from the PurposefulPantry.com. Welcome to my channel. First, let me forget or ask your forgiveness for the, the, the sound of chimes and winds that are going to be coming into the video on and off. We're having a winter storm that's moving through massive wind and we have chimes all up and down our back uh, wall and they may be in the video with us. Okay, so let's talk about dehydrating fats. First off, let's just say fats are not dangerous to dehydrate. Okay, inherently fats themselves are not dangerous. I see a lot of people ask, can I dehydrate an avocado? Can I dehydrate peanut butter? And answers will come back saying, no, it's unsafe to dehydrate fats. That's not true, okay? You can dehydrate fats. The problem comes with storage, but let's back up a little bit and talk about it. Fats, when exposed to oxygen, like an apple that it gets exposed to oxygen and turns dark, or an avocado turns dark, fats exposed to oxygen can oxidize and that means that they go rancid. That's when you get the funky smell of something like maybe a box of taco shells that you've had in the back of the pantry for a while. When you open them up, they smell pretty funky. Or maybe a package of, of seeds that you've opened and then put back and haven't touched in a while. When you open them, they smell bad. Um, it could be when you uh, open a, a kind of specialty oil that you used but then didn't use for a good long time. I mean, any oil will happen this way, but, uh, and then you go to pull it out again and it smells funky. That funky smell that you're smelling is rancid. Okay, that's, what, that's the name that you would give it. It has turned bad. So the thing with dehydrating things that are inherently full of fats and oils, um, are that yes, you can dehydrate them. Yes, you can store them, but there's no time that we can say for sure that you have this long before it turns rancid because it will depend so much on the kind of food it is, how you store, um, if it is uh, really warm where you are, whether you keep your house really cold all the time, um, the kind of food, the kind of fats, um, how much oxygen is in that jar, um, all these things that create, a, there's just no way to tell you that you have this much time with any particular food. So let's say that you decided to dehydrate a really fatty cut of beef. Okay. You had, maybe you had some hamburger meat that was like 70, 30 with the fat content. Uh, and you decided to, to just go ahead and, and brown it up and dry it. You didn't do anything special to it. You just browned it. You put it on some paper towels and you dried it and you stored it in your pantry. Then within about two months, you open it and it smells awful. And it's not that you've got mold. The likelihood is that the fats in that beef have turned rancid. Um, that you have the same problem with anything that you store that there is just no way to say you have a set time. That's why it's suggested that if you're doing hamburger meat, that you brown it, you pat it all off, you rinse it, you try to get off as much fat as you possibly can. When you dry it, then you store it in the freezer. And this goes for anything that you've dried that has a lot of fat in it. The best storage is in the freezer because you don't have to worry about it turning rancid there. When you've heated up oils, especially refined oils, it seems to be that they turn, they oxidize even faster than just naturally sitting in an environment where they are exposed to oxygen, uh, but aren't heated. So that dehydrating process adds heat to the whole process and you get a faster turnover of rancidity. So to store those things that are high in fats that you dry, the best storage for long term is to put them in the freezer. And I know it seems odd that you would dry meat to keep in the freezer. But the thing is, is that you can use that meat short term. So if you want to make up a couple of meals in a jar for a gift that you want to give a family, you should put a date on there that says you need to use this pretty quickly. I mean, you should tell them that if you don't want to use this quickly, stick it in the refrigerator or in the freezer, but you can do that. Or maybe you're going to go on a hiking trip and you want to prepare everything ahead of time. And it's going to be six months before your trip, but you want to make sure you have enough time to do it. If you do that, keep it in the freezer. Okay. Then when you're ready for your hiking trip, you can take it out and then you can go on your trip and you're going to be fine. That meat's not going to spoil in that week or two weeks that you're out most likely. 
Um, but the issue is that if you kept it on your shelf for six months, it may not have lasted and you've wasted that time and resource on something that you needed for that trip. So uh, the National Center for Home Food Preservation and quite a few other places will tell you the best place to store any dried food that has a lot of fat is in your freezer. Okay. Now, can you dehydrate peanut butter? No, peanut butter has so much fat in it that to try to dehydrate it at home and do anything with it becomes really problematic. And the reason that you can buy peanut butter powder on a shelf is they have a process that removes all the oils first. Uh, they press it, but it's a different kind of pressing. They press it to get those oils out so that the dry nut they're using, or the dry peanut legume, uh, and it then can be processed and dried uh, and that becomes more shelf stable. Um, dehydrated foods that you get like dehydrated eggs that you can buy um, they will probably almost always tell you on the can once you've opened it you should store it in the refrigerator or the freezer and that doesn't mean that you have to because you do have some time in order to keep it out um, but just like with everything else the best place to put it is in your fridge or freezer okay um, let's see now let's get to can you use oil to season chips that you're going to use yes you can because those things are things that you're planning on eating as a snack, not as storage. So if you want to put a little spritz of oil on top of your zucchini to make zucchini chips, uh, and if you need some ideas for that, I'll leave a link down in the description box below. Um, for those of you on uh, mobile right now, you'll have to open up your, uh, the, there's a, usually a little arrow at the bottom of your screen that you can open up to see the description box that has all the information. Um, but I'll leave you a whole bunch of ideas for, de uh, for seasoning any kind of dehydrated vegetable chip. Um, you can use a slight little bit of oil on there to help that seasoning stick uh, and use that because you're going to be eating that in the very short term. You don't have to worry about rancidity there. What you don't want to do is use oil on vegetable chips that you plan on putting on storage that you want to have on your shelf for six months because that will turn rancid. One, it's refined oil that you've heated up tends to turn rancid faster. Okay. And as far as vacuum sealing a fat to make it last longer, no, don't. That's not going to work. Okay, um, you cannot make things last longer that are full of fat on a shelf because it just doesn't work that way. You've already started the process with oxidation. Uh, fats in an anaerobic environment aren't safe, so just don't plan on vacuum sealing things with high fats in your pantry for long-term storage. It happens differently when it comes from a commercial process because they can do things differently than we can do at home. But don't plan on being able to put anything high in fat on your shelf for long-term storage. Okay, so I hope that helped. Go off, go dehydrate your zucchini chips with oil on it. It's fine. Go dehydrate your olives. Go dehydrate beef jerky. Just know that it needs to be stored in the freezer for best storage for long term. All right, so until I see you next again next time, happy dehydrating.